do a survey. We're at Confluence Point in downtown San Jose on the Guadalupe River. And in the uh, summertime, when all the trees get their leaves, all this garbage that's hung up there will stay there, but it won't be easily seen. Conducting a tour in 2013, I discovered this tree made a call to a photographer, Greg Karekis, where he to film the first family of beavers in downtown San Jose. Since then, studying how beavers are adapting to urban streams, I was able to film some new behavior. This beaver living within a storm drain in severe drought conditions. My, 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 my bear, eat your bear. Come on, let's go. Pretty shallow, but uh, you see I lost the boot. Oh hey, we're doing okay so far. I'm gonna take this little shoot here. I have to see that one fish. You see any scrap? You gotta get up. I'm going to the next rapid over here. Just under filming and studying animal behavior, observing what is missing to explain why animals are disappearing. The common simple thing like adequate gravel rock is the most important thing for these animals. Just upstream in the middle of St. John Street and Julian. Hopefully I don't rip the bottom out. Oh hey, got lucky. Woohoo! There are no leaks yet. Here she comes again. Observing right. salmon and understanding their behavior and the unique traits of the Guadalupe River salmon is that when the salmon come in and spawn they could scent in on our new unique ecosystems which are the storm drains which release water these salmon have all scented in the new Julian bridge and here's two fish uh, pretty much chasing each, one chasing the other one away from our nest up on the other side where people are using this as a toilet and hopefully we can get a, around this all right could things get much worse possibility keeps going oh there's some steel Jenna Bear and she paddles with me everywhere. She's my uh, companion. Whenever I know it's safe enough for her to go with me, she'll go. Get all the shopping carts and tires. And then we have things hung up here on this. this thing very expensive Over here. Almost a three foot 
drop. On the Guadalupe River, We've been blessed by the Guadalupe River. Monitoring flows that are sent to the river and making sure they stay clean. What you are observing is bubbles and water coming from underneath the river channel, indicating that there is a second river system underneath the existing river channel. The 880 weirs where the bubbles updwell from the main channel and we have a lot of trout in here being sustained between our pump stations and a lot of dissolved oxygen in between the 880 weirs on the Guadalupe River. Look at this beautiful trout. As of 2009 the big fish killed were back with a lot of rainbow steelhead back in the creek system, river system here. So we're gonna let this guy go and be free. Teaming up with citizen scientist Larry Joman, both of us conducting the science in the early 90s. 83, the Salmon and Steelhead Restoration Group did the first citizens genetic tissue gathering on the Guadalupe River and submitted our samples to Stanford University geneticist Jennifer Nielsen at the Hopkins Marine Station stories from historians John DeBona, Hollis Ray Stark. About the early 1930s, salmon were so plentiful you could walk across their backs. The year of 1992 was the year that I was able to apprehend my first salmon, placing them on a tire and having my family member Gabriel Castillo and Peter Stark to come and start doing the scientific gathering on where all these fish were holding near the vicinity of my next discovery. On July 9th, 2005, in conducting surveys on the effects of pumping facilities, we discovered the remains of a Colombian mammoth dating back 11 to 14,000 years. My companion Jenna Fair who you see in the photo is sitting on top of the bone. Her and I made this discovery and this mammoth is now assembled at the Children's Discovery Museum, the Loopy Mammoth Exhibit. Salmon were plentiful, so were the other animals. Hunting ospreys, southwestern pond turtles, many birds hunting within the downtown areas of San Jose. This still occurs, but the numbers have dwindled. So, indicator species like amphibians, the most common frogs, California toads, Pacific tree frogs, Pacific lampreys. These animals numbered in the tens of thousands in the 70s, 80s, and mid 90s to about the end of the 90s. So why are these animals disappearing? Things, but uh, more stuff hung up in the trees than there is uh, at the end of this log jam here. I'm beginning to Don't worry girl, you're gonna get a good bath later. Wow. We're gravel area. Jenna. Special thanks to the Guadalupe Coyote Resource Conservation District and Water Power and Law Group. Protecting the natural resources in Santa Clara County. 
by working with several other public agencies in adopting more friendlier techniques for rehabilitating streams. And saving water for wildlife and removing some of the most dangerous barriers. This one here is the Hillsdale Barrier and this is how it looks like in current drought conditions. Making streams safer for wild animals and wreaking the benefits for people. Here's a look at Larry Joman. As you observe this film, you could understand that the wildlife and the river system and streams still need your help. 